Hello, friends, subscribers, people who just stumbled here. It's Meg at Chasing Retro, and I'm glad that you're here with me today. Uh, today, I wanted to go ahead and show you a few of the things that I have sourced for my retro space exploration journals, which I will be starting on this week. Well, I guess I technically have started on them. I'm just going to go through and explain a few things, and then I'm going to stop talking and set the rest to music. If you're curious to see all of the things that I've found, you can keep watching. Um, so first is some uh, vintage 80s space-themed, I guess it's Star Wars knockoff gift wrap that I found at a yard sale last year. I thought it was so fun. And these are kind of the colors that I'm going to be using in the journal. Navy blue, purple, turquoise, black, and gray. And a little bit of green. I have a lot, not a lot, more than I would expect to have <laughs> found. I do have a lot of, or several pieces of ephemera that is related to space. These are actually clippings that my grandma uh, clipped out of the newspaper in 1962. I think that was the year that John Glenn went around the world in his orbit. So I have some articles from that, from our, uh, from the newspaper or several newspapers around the area I think she had. So here's John Glenn right here. And this is an article about his uh, Christian faith. And then Here's a little political cartoon with Uncle Sam. And then there's John Glenn in his little capsule. And then, yeah, astronaut fine, nation is joyous. So these, you know, these are just little snippets. Um, not really sure how I'm going to use these yet, but pull them out anyway. Okay, these next three pieces are things that I found in an estate sale. And honestly, they're probably pretty valuable and they're pretty valuable to me just because um, I'm a retro space exploration, space race buff anyway. Um, so I'll have to decide how I'm gonna use this, but this is an entire book of those, do you guys remember the magic pictures where you would turn a pencil sideways and it would reveal a picture? And I think the first one has been done, but the rest of them have not. Okay, maybe the second one was partly done. So I might do, well, that one has two. <laughs> there are a good bit in here that are not. I might just tuck one of these in each journal and, you know, in the flip through, make sure you know that these are in there so that if you wanted to do a, a pencil rubbing, you could, um, but I, yeah, just super cool. Isn't that neat? Uh, that was one of the most fun things I found at an estate sale last year. This is a book about model aircraft from 1956. And I know this is an actual aircraft, but uh, the kids and the teenagers and the young men who were buffs about aviation and test pilots and stuff like that probably would have subscribed to this type of magazine. So I thought it might be a neat thing to include. Um, here is Apollo 7 mission profile. Is this not neat? So evidently this family went to the JFK Space Center around that time and toured. And then this, this is just amazing. <laughs> like, how can you cut into this? I don't know. I really, I really am kind of up in the air as to whether or not I'll do anything with this one, but I thought I would just pull it out and show you guys anyway that this theme of journal has been a long time coming in my book and it's just cool. It's just really cool. And then I found this at an antique store. I actually picked it up for my son. He Oh, you know, when he was a little bit younger, was big into NASA stuff. But we have no idea who Stuart Rusa is. Um, I'm sure there's a reason why whoever had this got this. Maybe he was related to him. But I just picked it up. I thought it was cool. Apollo 14. 
And then this is a souvenir booklet for the Kennedy Space Center. I'm pretty sure I got this at the antique store as well. Or this could have been from the estate sale. I really don't know. Look at that hair. Just so neat, huh? So this is what you would have gotten to remember your trip. The one thing that I really wish I had that I don't have to go in these journals is some sort of a patch, like an iron-on patch. I think that would be super cool, but I don't have one. Okay, so here are the little teeny pieces and little um, things that I cut out that will be good for tags and cards. Anything, I went through my entire stash, so anything that had anything related to space, I pulled out and saved. Here's something from a Jeopardy game. These are some glasses, like a catalog of decorative glassware. There's a rocket, astronaut. Okay, so these are from a yearbook. Uh, this is the School of Engineering. So I just pulled pictures that look like these guys may be aeronautic engineers in training or maybe in Houston. Um, here's the graduating class. I just thought that'd be a cool thing to add as sort of a, um, you know, sort of a uh, make-believe type space mission crew. Here's one of the engineering professors. And then I have a page from an atlas. Here's some more yearbook photos. I won't go through every one of these. And then I've got textbook images, encyclopedia images. There's JFK, you have to have him in a space journal. Here's some dictionary definitions schematic and then these are some ads and snippets that I pulled out of popular mechanics and popular science magazines from the 40s and the 50s super excited about those these are some pages from a book of found colors so I tried to find the colors that would be harmonious with my space journal. And then these are some dot matrix index cards. Here is a book that I use frequently. This is actually an all weather uh, data recording book. And so it's waterproof. And I thought this would be perfect for something that an astronaut may carry with him. There are a few notes already made, but these are about herbicides because it was at a agricultural lab that I've purchased these, but still so cool that these are waterproof. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this book or not. I got a book like this when my son was really little. We made a lot of the models and then he outgrew it. I donated it. And then when we had the anniversary of the moon landing a few years ago, I regretted getting rid of it, so I bought another one, and this is the, the other one. We made a few more models for that. We had a little moon landing party at our house, but these are the rest of them. These are little pieces of the models that I can use in the journals, but also look at all these images in the front. If you want to do a space-themed journal, you need to get this book. I mean, it's just chock full of great images to use. It's called Paper Astronaut, and I think this glows in the dark. <laughs> so neat. It's published by Universe. I think that's who it is. Um, and then here is the folder of the pages that I will be using as um, either sourcing from the pages or folding and putting these pages in the journal. This is just some journal pages that I had. This is some computer, I don't really know what these are, like com like DOS commands or something. I got this in Happy Mail from uh, Angela and I knew that would come in handy one day and it is. So I'll fussy cut images like that out. This is from a very old golden book. 
And I think from here on out, I'm just gonna put the rest to music and let you just look through if you're interested and sort of get a feel of what these journals are gonna look like. Um, I'm gonna wait a little bit to show the covers that I'm gonna be using. Just wanted to show you today the things that I've collected to go in them. Um, get a little bit of curiosity peaked in you guys. And uh, for those of you who are into this theme, maybe it's something that you would like to watch as I put together. So thanks for watching today and I hope you have a wonderful day.